Brothers and sisters, this morning, I'm just going to get right down to it. We're going to be in the book of Jude. That is the book right before Revelations. And I'm studying on this this week. We had men's Bible study on Tuesday night, and we opened up on that. Just there it was, and, it, and the feeling was overwhelming. We need to study on that this morning. We I need to preach this to you this morning. This is God's message to us this morning. And I thank Him so much for letting us come together and hear what He has to say and how we should live our lives for Him. Amen? Amen. Father, be with this message. Be with these words delivered through me by You, Father. That we understand. And we're strengthened by this. In Your name I pray. Amen. Amen. And, uh, how's Angel doing back there? Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Keep her in our prayer. She had a little fainting spell just a while ago, so uh, get back there and just, they're working with her some, and it's going to be all right, okay? In Jesus' name. Yeah. All right, in the book of Jude, I want to get down to this. Uh, <clears throat> how will I start this where it's just, I want to say that in America, we see our world as it's happening today, Amen. And a lot of people, a lot of people all over this world don't want to hear, or understand, or see what the enemy is doing to us worldwide. Amen. And brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you, it's in prophecy right here. It's in this book. It's in the Bible. It's spoken of numerous times. And the closer we get to the end days, which I believe we're close to the end days, if we're not in them, Satan's going to just compound his attacks. Darkness is going to compound the the problems we have here of driving people. He, he just wants to turn people away from the Lord. Amen. Turn people away from the belief in the book. In America, there's been a shift thought over the past several decades. And uh, I'm telling you, American history, America in history stood for the right to express an opinion. Amen? Amen? And there's a man named Voltaire. He famously said, I like this. I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. And that's the way we ought to be in this world. Not be nitpicking and, and, and accusing people and talking down on people. And just in the negative, the fear has got to stop. God makes us strong, amen. I'm jumping to this with both feet, brothers and sisters. We have to be this way. We have to honor God. We have to stand up and fight. If we don't fight, we're going to fall. And what's going to fall is the fear and the rejection of God that causes you to fall. The fear. And a, a shift has happened from this historic position in recent times. The position of what? You know, I defend your right. I defend to the death your right to say it. I may not agree with you, but we have that right to speak. Where we used to believe that you should tolerate my views even when they were false. But now we believe it's wrong to call anybody's views false. Wrong. You can agree to disagree, but you don't belittle you don't pick at and you don't just stand above somebody. That's not the way God planned us to work. That's not the way it works. Not if we're going to be loving, caring Christians. In His army, not Satan's army. And this, this, this new view, the Bible speaks into our tolerant age by building fences, separating truths from lies. That's what we should be at right there, brothers and sisters. Embracing a lie as the truth can hurt you. And we've been deceived. We've been gullible in this world. In this, in this world now, not just the United States. We've been gullible and we've been lied to for so many years. We've been lied to. Satan is a smart booger. He's a chess player, but he's not a master chess player like God. Is. And he's playing his game. Tolerance, brothers and sisters, tolerance to what we see and what we've been through has its limits. You hear me? And we're going to test the limits. Tolerance has its limits. Tolerance has its limits, especially, amen, inside God's church. In today's scripture, we're going to be in, I'm going to say, Jude chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. This is probably the shortest book in the Bible. But oh, it's so strong and powerful, though. And listen to me on, on verse 1. Jude a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James to those who are called beloved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to read this again. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother James to those who are called 
Are we not called, brothers and sisters? Yes. These two men be loved, be loved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ. We too are called, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you. May verse 2. May mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you, beloved. Although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you, appealing to you to contend for the truth. Stand up and get it. Contend for the truth. It was once and for all, that's a key phrase, once and for all delivered to the saints. Verse 4, For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were, des were designated for this condemnation. Ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality. It's me, 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 not God. And deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. That's Jude 1 through 4. Does that speak volumes to you, brothers and sisters? Oh, I'm going to go to verse 17. I'm gonna, that's part of the text. Verse 17 through 21. I'm going to jump skip just a little bit. In verse 17, it said, But you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, In the last time there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. Did that jump right up there to verse 1 through 4? Amen! In verse 19, it is these who cause divisions. Worldly people. We're looking at that today. Well, devoid of the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourself up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. Amen! That means don't whimper, don't be no pansy. You stand up. Amen. We, we, we have to we have to get it while the getting's good. Amen. I'm just I'm, I'm at a loss of words how to talk eloquently, eloquently, like they do when you know. I'm just telling it to you plain out. Amen. Get it for the Lord and stand up for the Lord. And quit keeping your head turned away, your ears closed, your head in the sand. You're gonna get your butt kicked by the devil, Amen. and he ain't gonna be slouchy about it. I'm telling you, he's gonna take you down. And too many people, brothers and sisters, preachers, congregations, brothers and sisters have grown weak because they don't want to hear the truth. The comfort zone's there. The bubble ain't been busted. Guess what? I've got a bubble buster right here. And this bubble buster was written into something like this. Amen. We don't have to comply. We don't have to comply with it with the negativity. We do not comply with Satan's ways. You hear me? We contend for the Lord. We have to limit the tolerance that's been put upon us, brothers and sisters. We have to limit this. Beliefs are the building block of your faith. Do you agree? Amen. The beliefs. As seconds compromise time and currency, it's a critical component to a nation's economy. So are your beliefs in your life. Embracing the wrong beliefs can create a dumpster in the fire of life. Hmm. You have to embrace the right beliefs to live a good life. Second, you have to consistently, consistently embrace the right beliefs. Amen. You can't be swayed by what's going on. And I'm going to tell you right now, the darkness is upon us. You may get tired of me hearing this, but I'm going to tell you in a short, short time, you're going to see the darkness pounce on you like a roaring tiger. A lion. And it's coming. It's coming. It's spoken in the Bible. And in our lifetime, we're thinking, well... You know, I know it's coming, but we probably won't see it. So I'm just going to live the way I want. I'm fixing to give you some of that a little bit, too. I'm going to live the way I want to live right now because i got lots of time. You know, you remember my, my biblical, yeah. what BS is? Old squishy. Biblical stupidity. <laughs> when you believe this way. And I tell you what, there's a lot of BS going on in this world. And a lot of people are fooled. A lot of people are bowing to the wrong gods. A lot of people are living the way they want to live, thinking it's okay because we've been trained and thought to, to do that. Not anymore. Stand in the Word of God. No excuses. None, none will be accepted by God. That's right. Mm. The Bible says, when we don't consistently embrace the right beliefs, you can be compared to an immature, naive child. Listen to this. And this immature and naive child will be tossed around like a cork on the sea, bobbing up and down in every direction. And you think, I'm just spouting words. Look at Ephesians 4.14. I believe that's written. 
Amen? For certain people, this is what I was talking about a while ago, for certain people have crept in unnoticed. Why were they unnoticed? Who long ago were designated for this condemnation. Ungodly people who pervert the grace of God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Would you call that a wolf in sheep's clothing? Yes. Amen. Y'all quiet out there. Let's get with it. There's a demarcation line here I want to call to your attention. In verse 4, it's an implication that really is important. There's a group that is safe. Amen. And there's another group that's anything but safe. Think of a think of a rancher. Right? We've got some ranchers out here. We got some men that's worked on ranch. We got some farmer stockmen. But think about this. Think of a rancher <coughs> whose cows have a brand on them, but all of a sudden, them cattle from the next pasture, next place, the, the wire breaks they run through his fence. <coughs> now all them cattle are mixed up, but not the rancher because he knows his cattle because he knows his brand. I think this is so important. Jude is looking over the church. And he sees cattle of a different brand inside the fence. We have the brand of Jesus Christ, amen? amen. But the Satan's going to send in with another, another brand. The cattle are going to get mixed. Are we going to run with that herd or are we going to run with Jesus' herd? Jesus. We're going to be part of Jesus' herd, amen? amen. It is so important. We can't just we can't cut corners on this, brothers and sisters. Time is short. I'm going to tell you right now, time is short. If you don't believe me, just hold on. Don't unloosen your seatbelt because it's going to get rough. That's but right. it's going to get better. But it's going to get worse before it gets better. That's, right. yeah. That's a fact. They crept in. I just keep sticking in my mind. For certain people have crept in unnoticed. And we know what that is? That is the idea of deception. And Lord knows we've been deceived. Crept in unnoticed. Pictures me someone just kind of slipping into the water like a crocodile. He's on the bank, but he can slip down and hardly be even make a ripple, can he? He can even go in front of and not make a ripple. Keeps his tail still. And godless people have infiltrated the churches. They slipped in like an alligator. Jude is seeking to unmask people who snuck inside the church. They deceive the church family by hiding their dangerous beliefs in the beginning. Jesus warned about sheep, wolves, and sheep's clothing in Matthew 7 15. But you have people that slipped into the church. This has been from a long ways back. People slipped in appearing to be one thing, but turned out to be something else altogether. Have we noticed that lately? Yes, Amen. If you haven't, get your head out of the sand. Get it up. Jude makes a series. There's four charges about these people in verse 4. Number one, the Scripture condemns them. Okay? Number two, they are godless. They're separated from God. Number three, <clears throat> they change God's grace. His grace into sensuality or a license to do what they want to do. I've got God's grace. I can keep doing this. I can keep living like this. I can keep doing that. Give any way they want to, how they want to. And number four, they deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ in doing this. Y'all understand me? Again, beliefs are the building block of faith. And your behavior is the overflow of your beliefs, y'all. Look carefully at the words suspended in the middle of verse 4. Who pervert the grace of God into sensuality. Not caring what God wants. I'm sensual to what I want. I want to live the way I want to live. You can still hear the argument of these people today. God forgives sin, doesn't He? If he forgives sin and there's no penalty for our sin, let's live it up. That's thinking, thinking. That's deadly thinking. Grace isn't a license to do anything I want and God comes in later as my cleanup guy. Y'all hear me? Y'all yeah. quiet out there. Grace isn't a license to do what harms us and hurts the Father. If I see someone who believes in grace as a license to do anything, you can bet your bit me they're not a Christian if they believe that way of thinking. Instead, anyone who's truly experienced grace knows how costly it was for Jesus on that cross if you've experienced true grace. Someone, there's a lot of people give a lot of lip service to the song Amazing Grace. 
but they're never profoundly changed by grace. Call yourself a Christian. Are you? You believe in God's Word, do you? Do you live as God commands us to live? If not, why not? Boy, there's a whole lot of things going through my pea brain right now. And I better not speak some of them because Lisa back there going like this. <laughs> Once delivered to the saints. There's a lot of things in my life that needs updated. Don't look at me like that, Mama. I know every few months my phone asks me if I want to update. Now it's doing it weekly. My wife thinks my old favorite clothes need to go to the trash. No. My old lazy boy recliner, that brown leather recliner I bought a few years ago, it's looking tired. And I, and I need to switch after a while, get me a new one. Oh, well, there's some holes in it, and there's some, you know, uh, marks in it with stretch marks, and they know me, it's on them. But you know, duct tape and a towel covers a lot. But all the things in my life that need updating, my Bible and my faith never need updating. Amen? Amen? Theology faces new challenge. Challenge, but biblical theology never needs revision. The Bible does not need to be rewritten. It does not need to be reread for each and every one of us all the time. There's a word that describes theological innovation. Plain old word called heresy. You got it? Our faith is once and for all as it states in the Word of God. In verse, in verse 4, it says, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all, once and for all delivered to the saints. Does that mean us? Yes. Once and for all delivered to the saints. Us. Yes. Once and for all. Jude isn't alone in wanting to ensure there's purity of belief inside the church. Listen, if anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him in your house or give him any greeting. Second John, verse 10. That's an important scripture, brothers and sisters. Let me read it again. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting. Belief in Jesus Christ. Belief in God. Living for Him. Now, nowhere does the Bible contend, it commands us to contend for the faith outside of the church. This is very important right here. Instead, we focus on the beliefs of those inside the church. We're here, the family, right now. Now, we go outside the church and teach and preach about the gospel truth, the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But right here inside this church, inside this family, we are one, like-minded in unity, or should be. And this, I mean, there's so much that Satan can put on us. And there's, the, somebody gets pissed off at something. What they do is go running their mouth. They go to running their gums, and they're going to talk about somebody. They're going to try to enlist, you know, someone to be on their side. Do you not agree with what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, this is hitting me like a rock up between my eyes. If someone comes to you to belittle, demeanor, people in the church, people in your brothers and sisters, you stop them in their tracks. Say, so I don't want to hear it. I do not want to hear it. And if you got a problem with brother so-and-so, let's go to him right now. Matthew 18 has to be applied. You stop it. You nip it like Barney Five. You nip it, nip it the bud. You go to him. And if that doesn't work, if that's not satisfactory, you take a witness with you and talk to them. It has to be done. That's Scripture. And that is biblically correct. That's not BS. Amen. We need to stand for that. And uh, this is why we still do a thing called church membership. Brother and sister, I look out here. Not everybody's here today. And not everybody will be here every Sunday. But we are members in, a, members in the body of Christ. Amen? Amen? To say it another way, church membership is the public line of communication to those who follow Christ. His line ain't never busy. Call him up. Call each other up. And those who do, it, 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 it differentiates those who follow Christ and those who do not follow Christ. That's our membership. Church membership is the line of demarcation that communicates to the community who is a follower, who is not a follower. Do I need to say it one more time? 
Amen. Today we designate this distinction as church membership. It's a distinction. Church membership, it's a it's the Mason Dixon line for those who are Christ followers and those who ain't. You know, you youngs don't know what that Mason Dixon line is. You need to get back in your history. Parents, get out the history book. Without knowing history, we're bound to repeat it. These words at the church is not something you are born into or automatically added to upon your arrival. This shows that. Instead, church is a group where you must make a personal commitment to join, to be a part of. Your personal commitment begins with a personal but not private commitment to follow Jesus Christ. Your personal commitment and not private again, I say. I found it necessary in Jude 3, he said, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once and for all delivered to the saints. Brothers and sisters, woo, once you follow Christ, you become a part of Christ's church. Amen. 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 Think of it, think of a community ensuring they have clean water from pollution. Hmm. Think of the engineers who want to make sure the metal they work with is free from impurities. And the, and the bridges will hold the weight of your car, them designers, technicians. Then you understand why our beliefs had to be free from impurities and pollution. Today, we have to focus on ourselves, brothers and sisters. Jesus said, I need to get the log out of my eye before I focus on the speck in your eye. Oh, that's strong in so for the remaining minutes, I want to speak to you about four questions to build your faith. Anybody got a speck in their eye? Because the log's rolling us, he's rolling towards us in the, in the eyes of many. But we we got a log in our eye, so we don't need to talk about the speck in somebody else. Get that log out of your eye so you can see what's coming. Darkness is coming. Perseverance, uh, persecution is coming. Hard times are coming. But we have a God that is so strong He will lead us through this. He will take us through this. Amen? Amen. The weak will fall. The non-believers will fall. But the faithful and the true believers will be held up by God Almighty. Amen. Our salvation will be secure. He'll take us to it. I'm not scared of dying on this earth. Matter of fact, I plan on it. <laughs> you know, one-on-one, yeah, -on -one, don't get out of here. You know, you're going to die. But between the date and the dash, the dates and the dash, I preached about this before. I want my life to be dedicated to Jesus. I want my life to be the best Christian I can be and the spokesman and messenger for Jesus Christ. I want to tell people about my God. I want you to have that same desire. Unashamed, boldly, tell people about God. They may needed to have heard that. They may be at a place in their life, brothers and sisters, where that's all it took to see the joy in you or the assuredness in you or the strength in you when you even get to talk to them about maybe what God brought you through at some point in time. I'm not talking about writing a book on it. Just share a little bit. Build that. Plant that seed. Let them know that we have a loving, graceful God. That wants them to be with him. Limit tolerance, brothers and sisters. Limit the tolerance that's, that's been brought upon us. And build your faith. In verse uh, 20, let me see right here. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, pray in the Holy Spirit. In Jude 20, we, did, we have a word you to describe this teaching called orthodoxy. That's in chapter 20. Orthodoxy means straight beliefs. Straight beliefs. Look that up in a little bit. Jude chapter 20. You can see the nature of the word when you think of the orthodontist. Now listen to him. What does he do? Well, their practice is to make your teeth straight. Amen? Amen? Orthodoxy. You can see the nature of the word when you think of orthodontist. Therefore, if you receive Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk in Him. Rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith just as you were taught by your parents, your grandparents, your pastor, your church. Just as you were taught abounding in thanksgiving. That's in the Scripture, Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7. Everything right here, brothers and sisters, is the Word of God. Everything right here is the truth. 
It will lead you. The truth will set you free and lead you forward. Amen? Amen. God's people are called to be umpires. I call them judges when I'm down in the arena, but I, you know, that could get out of hand, could it? You need to know what a strike is and what the, where the strike zone's at. Right now, we have so many fouls being pitched, and we swing at them. Amen? There's four questions to build your faith. Number one is a really important question to me. Are you, I'm going to look at you, are you in the faith? I am. Amen. I see head nodding and I hear amen. Number two, who you are. We're going to discuss that in just a minute. Number three, do you know the big truths of the Bible? And four, this is really important to other people who want to be around you. Nobody answered nothing yet. Think about what I'm saying. Are you in the faith? Let's talk about it. <coughs> the first piece, first piece to securing your faith is to establish if you're in the faith. Jude could have felt automatically that it belongs to a family. After all, our friend Jude is none other than the half-brother of Jesus Christ himself. Matthew 13, 55. Check me out. Jude was one of the younger brothers of Jesus. Jude called Jesus his Messiah, his Lord, his Master. But Jude didn't always feel that way about his brother. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him. They were saying, he's out of his mind. Mark chapter 3, verse 21. For not even his brothers believed in him. John 7, 5. The belief wasn't quite strong enough right there. But it's coming, brothers and sisters. If your brother, you got a brother, said, I'm God and I'm the Lord. And I'm here to die for the sins of the world. If your brother said that, you wouldn't really believe in me, either, would you? But, listen to this, after Jesus rose from the grave, we see Jesus' mother Mary worshiping Him. Then we see His own brothers, James and Jude, worshiping Him, worshiping him as well. It's likely that James came to believe that his half-brother was more human than Jesus appeared to him upon rising from the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, 7. And James and Jude are both believers and are in the upper room of Jerusalem right after Jesus' ascension. Acts 1, 14. Check it out, y'all. Scribble it down and look. When you go home, we're going to be a test next Sunday. Y'all study your homework. These kiddos have got it. They're writing like they, they know what they're doing. <laughs> and they do. Something happened to Jude that we call the new birth, and he was spiritually reborn. Remember I preached on that a couple Sundays ago. Born again or born again? That was my sermon. This is one of the truly great arguments in favor of Christianity. If you can get your kid brother to worship, then you're somebody. If your kid brothers are devout Jews who worship only God alone and they arrive at the conclusion that the guy on top and the top bunk is God, you're something. And I've got to tell you a little story I heard, and y'all probably heard it. I seen this by a man on one of the Christian channels the other day. He's a comedian, but he's also a great, great singer. And he says, you know what? He said, I know this now. He said, my grandma told me, and now I know it. He said, each one of you, hold your, hold your thumb up. Everybody, hold your thumb up. Now, on your thumb, hold your thumb up. On your, on your thumb, there's a print on that thumb. So no one, no one out here has the same print as you. And you know what that means in God's eyes? You are thumb buddy. <laughs> Amen. And uh, he didn't rely on the biological connect to Jesus. Instead, he knew he needed a spiritual connect to Jesus. You're a thumb body. We have that spiritual connect. A fundamental aspect of being part of his church family is that all of us, all of us have experienced a new birth. Amen? Number two, who you are. That's a pretty good question. The world can be so unkind and so mean. You, you may have been called an idiot. I say a hack, a nut job, or a lunatic, a blowhard, a radical, or a fool. They've been reading my resume. <laughs> I've been called all of that. They said your parents weren't married. They called your names, but I can't utter them from my lips. 
Who are you? Who are you in Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters? To those who are called, as the Scripture started out, beloved in God the Father who are kept for Jesus Christ. You are called, each and every one of us here. You're beloved by the Father. You're loved. You're kept for Jesus Christ. You're safe. You're secure. Amen? Amen. You're God's workmanship, brothers and sisters. You're, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're Christ's friend. You've been joined with the Lord. You're justified. You're redeemed. You're righteous. Hallelujah. And you are completely forgiven when you're in the Lord. You're free from sin's bad, pernicious power. You've died with Christ. You're holy being born again. You reign with Christ. You're a new creation in Christ. You're a servant to God. And you're a saint to God. You are blessed. You've been adopted, amen, brother and sister. Adopted into the family of God. You're a slave of Christ. You're a son of God. You're a daughter of the King. You are a child of God. Amen. How much more can I get? Y'all out there like bumping you. Is this a Baptist Association meeting or what? <laughs> Give God the glory. Amen. amen. Our God. And you know the big truths of the Bible? I found it necessary. This is in Jude 3. I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend, contend, contend for the faith that was once and for all delivered to the saints. I want to borrow an analogy from a man named Albert Mower. I thought this was pretty cool. He's president of the Southern Seminary. And for a moment, uh, so when you enter the emergency room in one of the hospitals, Dr. Bill, you'd appreciate this. Say so you went down to, to the hospital right here. You'll quickly see the trained medical personnel practicing triage. Is that the right way to say it? Triage. triage. There's always chaos in a county's ER and nurses station. Amen? Amen. Always. Hmm. The EMT and the doctors know the questions they need to ask a patient in order to determine who has the most critical needs. Can you smell what I'm stepping in? The word triage comes from the French word trigger, who means to sort. Doing triage in a emergency room is where someone decides which patients need the most urgent treatment. If this did not take place, someone suffering from the flu would receive the same urgency as someone suffering from the Ebola virus. Well, Christians who are attempting to navigate all the varied steeples dotting the landscape in our towns, each steeple represents a place where people meet under the banner of the cross and purportedly teach the, the Bible or something close to it. Some. If you're new to Christianity, you're probably aware that not all Christians agree on everything we read in the Bible. And we can't agree to disagree without belittling, condemning, or backstabbing, or talking about others. We debate and discuss all aspects of the Bible, creation versus evolution. We talk about that in our Bible studies. Predestination versus free will, or how old the earth is. And to sort this out, you and I need to do biblical triage where we determine which parts of the Bible are the most critical to our faith. And get on it. Certainly, at the top of our list would be the Trinity. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Who Jesus was, is, is salvation by faith alone in Jesus alone and the Word of God. We need to be in that study now. We need to be in that moving towards it. We need to be in that experience. Amen? Amen. All of these beliefs are critical. For critical importantly. You could liken them to our heart, our lungs, and our brain. And Christianity cannot live without these beliefs. And we could call them first order beliefs. Okay? After all, we can see there are second order and even third order beliefs. And these would include what we believe about the finer details about Jesus' second coming. Church government and gender roles within church leadership. I find this, this helpful. Gender roles in, in church leadership. Now I may stomp your foot a little bit, but men need to lead in the church. Amen. Men need to preach and teach in the church. Take that leadership. Church government, the church government needs to be pure in serving God. We have a government now nationwide that is corrupt. Amen. We have a nation, a government right now that's trying to 
and not try, but have taken God out of the context. Yes, we have a we have a government now, and y'all may not like me talking about government, but sit still because I'm going to. This government is out to destroy Christians. Amen. And when we have 350 million <coughs> babies aborted a year, there is something wrong. And to hit with all this COVID, COVID 19 COVID stuff, that's the most that's the most minute killing machine there are. Look at abortion. And I'm telling you, abortion starts at conception. Not one week night later, not 30 days later, not when there's a heartbeat. It starts at conception, God's plan. And we don't stand up against that and fight for that. We're just as bad as the rest of the world. Amen. Amen. You can't turn a blind eye to it and a deaf ear to it and expect to be blessed. You can't lean on a shovel and think God's going to dig the hole. We have to do the work too. You know, We have to stand for it. A liberal will treat the beliefs of the first order like the beliefs of the third order. You're left with widespread confusion. Yet, yep, you're left with nothing that will nothing that will offend, but there's also really nothing left to give hope to when you're in that third order of beliefs. A fundamentalist will do the exact opposite. He'll treat the beliefs that belong to the third order as if they were the first order. And that's where we're in trouble, brothers and sisters. When this happens, Love evaporates inside the church. And we cannot have that. Amen? We have to have a church that loves one another, lifts one another, with one another, in, in Scripture, in studying, in, in, our, in our everyday acts in life. We need to love and be there for one another. If, I, and if I'm confused about who Jesus is, I've lost the gospel itself. Amen? Yeah. Here's a helpful summary. In essentials, unity is a not in, in non-essentials is liberty. In essentials, it's unity. Non-essential is liberty. In all things, charity. Amen? Amen? We could say this statement in another way. In the first order essentials, unity is important. In the second and third order, non-essentials, liberty, and in all things, charity. So we have three different sections right there. But charity and love is so important, brothers and sisters. There's an essential belief that we must have unity. That's an essential. And I'm confused about the age of the earth, but I still know the gospel. I can't tell you how long the earth's been here. God can. The age of the earth represents a non-essential belief, how long it's been here. Amen? Amen? And we should have some liberty. So if I'm confused about the gift of tongues, I still know Jesus Christ died for me. Amen? Amen. He died for me and He died for who else? Us. Us. Amen. Bible-loving Christians should discuss and even attempt to persuade others over such matters as not essentials. <coughs> That's why our Bible studies is so good. Because we get down and dirty in the Word. And I mean to get down and dirty is mean to rebuke Satan and learn the truth of our God. Amen. And learn what we need to be doing. And uh, here's a question to ask you earlier. Do others want to be around you? That's a loaded question, ain't it? Somebody asked me that, the first thing I do is go, you know? <laughs> ain't got nothing to do with it. Listen. Jude doesn't mention his family connection to Jesus because of humility. He could have begun his short book this way. Hey guys, I'm Jude. I'm a half-brother of Jesus. Look at me. No. Not many people can claim that. But Jude doesn't, he doesn't do it this way. And what I like about him in this book of Jude, he is both strong in his conviction, but also he is humble. So many people are strong in their convictions, but yet they want to run when you see them coming. When you see them coming your way. Not Jude. He's humble. He's humble. And you know what America needs? I'm going to close with this. I'm about done. I think we get the message today, amen? Amen. You know what America needs? America needs churches that embrace the whole counsel of God. Amen. But also embrace people outside the church with tremendous compassion. You hear me? We shouldn't belittle others. We love others and point them humbly to the truth of God's Word. We should not belittle our brothers and sisters in this church, we should lift one another. And I'm going to tell you for one, I better not 
hear any more back talking, backbiting, gossip and stuff. I'm going to step right in the middle of it. That's not the way that God wants us to, to, to live. Not the way that God wants us to love and embrace one another. Sure, somebody's going to have a problem, but you be humble. If you have a problem with somebody, like I say, Matthew 18, you go to them. Work it out with them. It's biblical. If that don't work, take somebody with you. Because the chances are it can't be worked out. But egos, backbiting, gossiping and stuff, that is the devil's ploy to destroy and divide this church. It cannot and will not happen. Amen? Amen. One another in unity for God. Like-minded for God. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this strong message today. Thank you for what you've given us. And Father, I ask that in unity, we walk. And in love, we serve. And Father, most of all, let us extend grace as you have extended to us. And Lord, bring people to this church. Bring people here, if it's your will, to hear and understand the truth. Not just from me, Father, but from all of us. All of us who are followers, who are, who are following you, Jesus Christ. Believe we have that faith. We know that we know that we know. You are King. You are God. You are all so powerful. Our Creator. Father, forgive us as we daily slip off into some sins or stumble and, and get the stink on us, Father, and you cleanse us off with your forgiveness and then send us right on the way we're supposed to be going. And Father, we're only human. And we are going to fall and stumble back. We give ourselves to you, Father. Love you. Our King of kings, our Lord of lords, our Savior, Jesus Christ. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Woo-ha! Brothers and sisters, see you next Sunday. Bring somebody with you. Talk to somebody. Bring them in if they're, in, if they're just looking for something in the Word of God. Amen.